Last week, when we took a look at Base64 encoding, I mentioned one thing about websites, and that is we would generally like to limit the number of requests as much as possible because, well, every additional connection to the server incurs some overhead. So if you have many pictures on one page, things could really slow down. Today, we'll take a look at yet another approach to actually, well, try and reduce on this problem. And that is using a method called sprites. On today's Random Wednesday episode, let's take a look at what sprites actually are and try to figure out how they work. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, today's episode is about web programming and it sort of works on the premise that more requests is a bad thing. If that is not something that applies to you, then you would probably want to avoid this technique. However, as far as I'm aware, well, most web pages would want to reduce the number of requests just for you know, optimization purposes. So yeah, it's definitely something that you may want to consider if your web page has many images. Generally, this works best when these images are tiny little icons and you have a lot of them. One example of this may be you know, web applications like YouTube or Reddit. There's just a whole bunch of tiny pictures everywhere. And if we want to make one request for each picture, we'll have to make quite a large number of requests. So here's how we work around this problem. We squeeze every image into one picture. What this means is you have one giant picture, you know, sometimes known as a sprite sheet, and it contains all our little images, also known as sprites. What this means is just one request gets you everything in one shot. So of course, that is where we gain the optimization we want to gain, and that is to reduce the number of requests. But then the follow-up problem, of course, are the hoops we need to jump through to show just the one sprite, and that can be done using CSS. As you can imagine, the kind of operation we need to do is similar to cropping. Basically, instead of telling it to display the entire image, well, we just tell it to display well, a small portion. Here's what the code will look like. Firstly, to display an image, you can still use your image tag as per normal. However, now the image you're going to display has to be some sort of an empty placeholder. One method that is used is to actually make it display a very small transparent PNG. Of course, the trivial way of doing it means we incur one more request, just one more for the entire page, and that is to fetch that image. If you want to save on even that, you can embed it as base64. But of course, note that when you have many pictures, your page gets much longer. So you may not want to do that. So in our particular case, we're not going to do that. We're going to stick to just getting in the transparent picture. And then that allows us to move on to the fun part, which is to make use of CSS to specify the sprite. Basically, with the element targeted correctly, you just need to set the background image for that element. You now need to specify the four things that you would normally have to in a cropping, and that is of course the width and height of the crop, as well as where to start cropping. So in this case, because I want the letter A, and that is 50 pixels both in height and width, well, my CSS is fairly simple. I just need to specify these four things, ensure that my HTML element is targeted correctly, and then yeah, when I actually open that page, well, I get the results I expect. Now, the interesting thing is, if you want to target something that is not at 0, 0 at the top left, clearly our letter B starts at an X coordinate of 50, but as it turns out, putting 50 here is not the right way of doing things. Instead of saying that, we have to say negative 50, and the reason for this is because that actually tells us how to transform the image before actually showing it that. So yeah, this is probably the only sort of complex or mind-boggling part. The numbers represented here don't mean, you know, where to start from. They actually mean how much you want to shift the image by. Incidentally, with the offset set to 50 pixels, well, you see the letter C. And in fact, the reason why that happens is a complete coincidence. You see, giving that offset actually shifts the picture well, completely out of the frame. However, the picture actually tiles over, and as a result, you're sort of seeing the letter C overflow from a repeated copy. 
So yeah, this might be a bit confusing, but as long as you picture it as, well, an image moving underneath a stationary viewport, you should be fine. You should be able to tell exactly what's going on. So along a similar vein, if I wanted to see E now, what I had to do is to actually minus 50 on both. So the reason for this is of course, we want to take the image, shift it left by 50, shift it up by 50, and yeah, things will land on the correct spot. So that is essentially how you crop your sprite sheet. So yeah, there's nothing to stop you from doing this for say the hover action. So what I have here is just, you know, a hover selector for the same item. When it's hovered, we now pick a different image. And as you can see, well, on the web page itself, it works exactly as you expect. It makes it seem like there are two different pictures, but you're really just scrolling about within the same one. Of course, there are certain disadvantages to doing things this way. For example, when you're zooming or, you know, when there's some error with JavaScript or loading the CSS, you may find that your entire sprite sheet gets displayed or it may not be cropped correctly. So of course, what this means is you need to be extra careful about, you know, the possibility that a user may zoom up the page or that the font size may actually change. So yeah, what this means is you're going to have to do more thorough testing. Of course, this also makes your code more complex. And there are two possible disadvantages arising out of this. Firstly, of course, well, it may make your code less readable. And secondly, it will of course make browsers do more computation. Now, this is generally not a very huge problem. I've never heard of a browser sort of, you know, getting a bit overwhelmed by cropping images. But at the same time, well, it's a very possible thing. So yeah, both of these things are things you have to consider as well when deciding whether or not to use such a method. So now that you understand this method, what's next? You see, constructing your sprite sheet is also a pretty challenging task. You will ideally want to pack all your sprites such that you waste as little space as possible. Because of course, if you have wasted space, well, then that will make your sprite sheet far bigger and loading it will take more time. There are libraries out there that can actually help you sort of pack everything nicely and also handle some of the cropping code for you. So those are definitely solutions you want to consider as well if you don't want to write things from scratch. But yeah, that is basically it. That has been CSS sprites in a nutshell, an interesting little optimization technique that may speed up the loading of your page. But yeah, that's basically all there is for this Random Wednesday episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.